All right, we're back. I think we're upright this time. And uh, if you're just tuning in again, we're just uh, gonna, gonna look to God's word for some encouragement this morning. And uh, hope that you're well on this rainy morning. And uh, just thank you for, for uh, being a part of uh, this uh, live broadcast. So I'm just gonna open with a word of prayer and then we're gonna open up God's word. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for um, uh, being our God, even when uh, a lot of people are concerned. Um, our daily routine has been changed, and um, there just seems to be uncertainty in what the next few weeks will hold. But I thank you, Lord, that you never change. And I just pray as we look into your word this morning that you would guide us, that you would lead us, and that we would just learn about your faithfulness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So again, thank you for joining us. Sorry for that little glitch there at the beginning, but I wanted to uh, read a couple verses from Isaiah this morning uh, to get us started. And so if you've got your Bibles, we're going to look at Isaiah chapter 46, two verses there, and, uh, and, and that's where we're going to get started. So Isaiah 46, verses 8 and 9, and this is the Lord speaking to the Israelites when they were in captivity. Uh, the Lord says this, Remember this and stand firm. Recall it to mind, you transgressors. Remember the former things of old. For I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from the ancient times to things not yet done. Saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will accomplish all my purpose. And those are just real encouraging words for us this morning. Um, and so we're going to just talk about it for uh, a few minutes. I just, it made me laugh a little bit um, when God says in there in verse 8, he says, Remember this and stand firm. Recall it to mind. He wants us to remember this. And then he says, you transgressors. <laughs> he's so, talking to me. Yeah, he's talking to me too. He, so he says, okay, I want you to remember this, you sinner. Uh, and of course, I don't think there was... He was being facetious. I don't think he was trying to get a rise out of them. I think he's just being honest with them. Yeah. We are sinners. Right. But he calls us to remember the former things of old. Uh, and so when I think of, well, what would, what would God be asking us to remember? And I think um, each one of us could, uh, and I encourage you to do this, when God says, remember the things of old, remember the things that just confirm who God is. Mm -hmm his character. What, what verses do you think about? What, um, what passages come to your mind? And so just a few off the top of my head, um, when, I, when I read that verse, I think of God's greatness and his power in creation. God said, let there be, and it was. So whether it was the, the, the sun and the moon and the stars, or the earth and the sea, or uh, whether it was man, God said, let there be, and it was just his greatness and power in creation. Uh, but I'm also, it also makes me think of, um, it brings to mind Noah. And, and God looked at the earth during the times of Noah and he saw wickedness, he saw evil, he saw violence. And because of his righteousness and his justice, he decided that there would be a flood and he was going to start over with Noah and his family. So I think of his greatness and power, but I also think of his righteousness and his justice. Um, but I also think of God's desire for people to know who he was and who he is today. So it makes me think of David and Goliath, just a familiar children's story, right? You, you want to tell that, that story to your kids. So I think of David and Goliath and, and David picking up the stones and getting the instructions from God, David being obedient to God, doing what God asked him to do. Uh, but there's that verse in there that says that God was doing this God was going to give David the victory so that all the world would know that there's a God in Israel. Mm -hmm. And so it reminds me of God, um, God's desire for people to know who he is. And of course, then if we uh, move past where we're looking here in Isaiah, because we have the full scripture, the Israelites didn't have all of it, but we do. So when we're looking back, we're looking back to the New Testament. They, they would have been looking forward to the Messiah coming, but we're looking back and remembering 
that Jesus came. And when John saw Jesus, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And again, just speaks to God's purpose. Um, he had a purpose. And that's, that's uh, coming a little bit towards the end of verse 10 here in Isaiah, where he concludes, My counsel shall stand, and I will accomplish all my purpose. And so for me, those are the things that I think of when I think of when God calls us to think of the former things of old, think of what God's done, think of his character. Those are just some of the things, the first things that come to my mind. Yeah. Um, and just, just going back to the beginning of that passage um, where that, that you read, where it says, um, I just want to kind of look at it myself. Re my translation says, remember what I accomplished in antiquity. And I love that idea, just that he's, God has already accomplished so much. And when we face uncertain circumstances, and we are definitely, our planet, we are in, a, in the most uncertain scenario, um, you know, in any of our lifetimes, um, facing something that's global. And when, when we face uncertain things, we have the, um, the, the gift of God's faithfulness through antiquity we that, that we can look back at. So I love that. Um, and when he says, you know, I, you were kind of talking about how it's funny that he's like, you transgressor, transgressors, and he immediately calls the people sinners. But, you know, um, it, there's really a lot to that. Because sin, when we trace sin to its very core, it can be traced back to doubt. Or remember Adam and Eve, they, when, when the serpent came to Eve, he said, did God really say? And then Eve did not remember the exact words of God. Remember, she added to them. And, and so um, when we are facing uncertain times, Sin is always associated with a forgetfulness and a doubting. And so we need to discipline ourselves to remember, discipline our minds. And, and we are a people who are being fed with news forecast, like Constantly. 24 hours, seven days a week, we have access to news now. Um, media from, from Facebook to Instagram to, we are being fed with, um, in some respects, fed with fear because um, fear sells, so these outlets are using, that they can use these things to just make, make money, which that's fine, that's their way of making income. But we as, as believers must be discerning and recognize that sin is exactly what will result when we forget the truth of who God is, the truth of his character, or when we doubt it. So, so as we face uncertain times, we need to, the, the Psalms says that God's word is a shield for us. And so we've got to remember God's word, remember what he says about his character and who he is, and let that be a shield that prevents us from walking in sin. We can be walking in sin and not doing anything that appears sinful. Mm -hmm. But doubt and forgetfulness of who God is always results in sin. So I think that's why he says, remember you transgressors, because they had forgotten. And, and I'm guilty of that moment by moment it's not even like a you know you wake up and have a quiet time and remember but then 10 minutes later you read a facebook article that says the world is coming to an end and you forget and that's me i can very easily be um and james talked about that that doubting us to and fro mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's it's so funny uh a, a couple of weeks ago when all the major league sports were canceling their season and all of the uh, college campuses were closing, you know, the, everyone was saying, well, what will we talk about? What will we, what will we spend our time doing in the evenings? And it seems like the news media has, has filled that void. Right. And it's like Sarah said, just nonstop information coming at us. Um, so I would encourage uh, each one of you today to stop for a minute and think, what in God's word brings me encouragement mm -hmm. about who he is? Mm -hmm. what, what passages come to my mind when I think um, about being assured that God is still in control? And uh, go to his word and see what, see what is there for you in terms of encouragement today. But then another thing that is always helpful, um, I find, is to look back in your own life to see when has God been faithful in, in, in the past. Mm -hmm. And I think of um, when Sarah and I were first married, we lived on 
um, single income at eight dollars an hour. Um, Can I tell him what you did for a living then? Sure. <laughs> Jeff, God bless him. We lived in Canada, and legally I couldn't work. Um, I didn't have a work visa yet. And so Jeff took a job as a at a recycling plant, and he literally sorted people's garbage. and Recyclables, would, not garbage. Okay, well, and that's that's a good way of looking at it. But it was, it was he sorted people's garbage and, and classified yeah. the recyclables. So he's a good man. Yeah, it was... It, it, it was interesting, but I guess what I look back, what I remember is God's faithfulness. Yeah. Um, single income, $8 mm -hmm. an hour, and he provided for everything yes. that we needed. Um, I can look back at other work situations. I can look back um, in, in things, ministries we've been involved with, friends that we've had, and just over and over again, God being faithful uh, to see us through um, all circumstances, the, both the highs and the lows. And so that's another thing that you can do is look back in your life and, and ask yourself the question, when has God been faithful to me in the past? And that can be an encouragement to know, uh, even in these uncertain times, that God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The scriptures say that God never changes. Mm -hmm. um, we, we want this to be a little bit interactive. So if you have a scripture passage that you, you cling to, that really declares to you this is who God is, post it in the comments below or um, people will be able to watch this later so they can write those passages down and, and just um, and, and take that as encouragement for themselves. Also, if you have a story of God's faithfulness in your life, post it in the comments below. Just take a minute to do that. Um, I think about just for myself, I think about how... Um, Growing up, we, we grew up in a single, single parent family, and there were five of us girls, um, and, and we were not wealthy. We, we did not have a lot of money, and, and I, I often share about these things because I look back now as an, as an adult and can just see how God was so good to us. Um, but God always provided for, for our, our needs. He, he often used the church body to do that. And um, I'm just so encouraged now looking around at how the church body just just um, this morning we were able to somebody donated crib bedding for a new single mom who just had a brand new baby. Somebody donated a crib and a mattress. Um, and so we're able to even in the midst of just kind of difficult times, we're able to 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 come together as a body of Christ and, and meet needs. Um, I was down at the Hope Center this morning and we were. Um, just a slew of volunteers still getting the produce, still getting the um, groceries from the cottage out. And um, so God is, God uses, I love that God uses the body of Christ yeah. to prove his faithfulness. He's yeah. making his name known, which goes back to his purpose that you were talking about. Yeah. And, and ultimately God's purpose for the church, uh, you know, we in, in, uh, I think 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we're called to be his ambassadors. And uh, as his representatives, what are we to be doing but the Great Commission? And let me read that to you. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And so there again is that assurance that God is with us. But as we read in Isaiah that God accomplishes his purpose, this is his purpose. That whether we're um, concerned about the coronavirus or we're concerned about uh, our income or we're concerned about the health of our family members uh, or we're having the, the, the greatest week or greatest month or greatest year of our lives yet, whatever our circumstance, God has his purpose and that is that people would know who he is and he wants you and I to take part in that in that purpose and so we can draw encouragement from that but that also means that we have a purpose so if you think to yourself well I don't what am I gonna do I have to stay home I need to stay away from my friends we still have purpose and I would encourage you today uh, to pick up the phone and call somebody it might be uh, a church member that you haven't seen in a couple weeks it could be a family member or it could just be a friend and just ask them, hey, how's it going? Um, can I just share with you what is giving me comfort today and, and share scripture verse with them? Um, and, and 
we can be the body of Christ even if we're not in physical proximity. Uh, we have the technology to uh, remain close. And so my encouragement to you, stay connected today. Uh, get, your, get your news. Find out what's going on. Find out what they're recommending. But then turn it off. You don't need to listen to it for hours on end. If you've got that kind of time, dig into the Word. See what God's done in the past. Look forward to what He's doing in your life now. And of course, we have the great eternal hope for the future. Uh, so that's that's my encouragement. I'm just going to mention, we do have some people have been commenting. Um, Ava mentioned Psalm 23. So good. Uh, thank you, Ava. Tracy Carey, Psalm 103. That's mm -hmm. almost the uh, chapter that we were going to do this morning for this devotion. Another great yes. uh, chapter. Uh, my parents uh, chimed in, Jeremiah 29, 11, great passage about God knowing the plans he has for us. Um, Isaiah 40, verse 31, if you're just feeling weak and down and um, that you need a little bit of strength, that's a great verse. Uh, thank you, Julie. Psalm 91, another great, another great um, chapter of encouragement. So um, awesome that you guys are, are giving some suggestions. And uh, I encourage you to find your own. Mm -hmm. uh, find a, find a, a chapter in the Psalms or find some verses that really uh, bring encouragement uh, to you, that strengthen your faith and cling to it during these times. Um, just going back to, you know, that, that first passage in Isaiah 46, ultimately um, we're talking about the attribute of God's sovereignty in that passage. He's saying, what I declare will take place. And um, let me read a couple other just passages that talk about God's sovereignty. Um, Daniel 4.35, God does according to his will among the host of heaven and with those who inhabit the earth. Like we could just camp there and chew all day long that God does according to his will among those who inhabit the earth. So God is accomplishing his will among you and I. Um, I love this part. No one slaps his hand and asks him, what are you doing? Like nobody gets on to God and says, hey, don't do that. that. That was wrong. So even in him sovereignly through his hand, allowing coronavirus, which is the consequence of, of sin. It's not, it's not God sending a lightning bolt and judging the earth. It's no. the consequence of sin back at Adam and Eve. But even in his sovereignty of allowing that through his hand, he is going to accomplish his will among you and I. I love that. Um, that's Daniel 4.35, Job um, 23, 13, and 14. He is unchangeable, and who can turn him back? Who can change him? We cannot change God. Um, whatever he has desired, he does. Um, Psalm 115.3, our God is in the heavens, and he does all that he pleases. And so for me, that brings me so much comfort because I'm also, I'm not just standing on the sovereignty of God that he does what he, what he wills. I'm also standing on the fact that he's good. Mm -hmm. And so his will will always be for my good. It will always, and that's Romans 8, 28 and 29. We stand, we quote that all the time, but um, we said this in the student, we, we did a live feed with the students and we said, we're not trusting God for a good outcome. That would be a misunderstanding of scripture. We're trusting God to be good no matter the outcome. He will use all of our circumstances always for our good and his glory or his fame, that his name would be known among the nations. And so when I, when I wake up in the morning right now, especially during this very, very crazy time, I'm asking, okay, God, today, how do you want to use me to make your name known. I don't want to make coronavirus famous. I want to make the God who will be good no matter the outcome famous. Yeah. That's my goal. All right, guys. Well, something for you to chew on there this morning. I encourage you to be in the Word. Pick up the phone. Yes. And, and uh, be, be a, a good neighbor. Love your neighbor by encouraging them today with... Uh, with a phone call, with a scripture verse, with a time of prayer. Um, know what the news is saying, but don't dwell there. Uh, God's got a purpose, and it's, and it's more than just coronavirus today. It's about making himself known throughout the earth. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, time together this morning. Uh, come back tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. Pastor Darrell will be sharing a devotion tomorrow morning at 11. And uh, we're planning to, to bring a devotion each morning this week at 11 o'clock. So... 
Uh, hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, let somebody else know so they can tune in tomorrow to Pastor Daryl. Make sure this you will share be posted. it. Yeah, make sure you share it, and this will be posted later as well. So you can so watch it. We love you guys. Yeah, love you guys. Uh, stay safe and be an encouragement to those the Lord puts in your path today.